Chapter 369 Inception I've been recognized. Klein instantly fell into shock as he nearly entered combat mode. Even if he didn't use his spear vision, he could tell from Emlyn White's tone and words that he wasn't lying. He was very confident and certain. Just as the tense feelings rose in him, Klein suddenly thought of something. Why should I worry about that? Then, he answered his own question in his mind. So what if I was recognized? The current situation is different from what it was two months ago. I was left flustered by the incident with Ambassador Bakerland in front of the official Beyonders. I was rushing around, trying to grasp at every possible straw. In the process, I ended up making contact with Beyonder circles, and even the possibility of me becoming a Beyonder was quite plausible. Therefore, even if my identity as a Beyonder was exposed, they wouldn't think too deeply about it and dig up my past. And it's very likely that Detective Isengard Stanton is a Beyonder, and he maintains good relations with the police and the official Beyonder organizations. He had speculated that I was the same as him and tried to gently rope me in. In this regard, I can barely be counted as a borderline member of the official Beyonders, and if anything were to happen, I wouldn't necessarily be imprisoned. More importantly, I've already made my current image so deeply ingrained that I don't have to worry about any wanted posters. If anything goes wrong, then I can just abandon 15 Mink Street and my identity as Sherlock Moriarty. So what's there to worry about? Yes, before I came here, I had also performed the divination, and the revelation was that there was almost no danger. As these thoughts flashed across his mind, Klein's contracted pupils, slightly appalled expression, and his fight-or-flight state eased, as if he was discussing the day's weather with Emmeline White. Seeing his calm expression, Emmeline White raised his eyebrows, took a few steps to the side, and squeezed past him before slowly sitting to his side. The vampire looked at Bishop Utrovsky, who was leading the believers in the rite of Holy Communion, and he said with a sneer, Mr. Detective, aren't you afraid that I'll go to the police station and shout out loud that you are a beyonder? Similarly, Klein looked forward and said without turning his head, I'll go with you and shout out loud that there's a vampire. Come on, let's have an internecine outcome. Do you think I'm afraid of you? Emmeline White's expression stiffened. He raised his right index finger and said, Sanguine, a noble sanguine, got it? Before Klein could speak, Seeing that Bishop Utrovsky was preoccupied with the rites of Holy Communion, Emmeline White chuckled and said, <laughs> Regardless, I'm finally going to be free. I pretended to submit and told the old man that I was willing to convert to believing in Mother Earth and was deeply penitent for what I had done. Although I had no idea what was necessary to show repentance, it's not a problem to put on an act. That old man actually believed me like this, and he was very happy as well. He let me out on the spot and he let me become a priest here. He told me that as long as I memorized the Holy Bible of the Church of Mother Earth, he would allow me to return home. <laughs> that old foggy, who's all brawn and has become silly from his faith, sure is easy to fool. Easy to fool? Klein turned his head to look at the vampire. Looking smug, he looked forward and said, Father Utrovsky used to be a pirate. He probably killed far more people than the number of people your father has ever saved. Furthermore, most pirates don't trust their fellow crew members. Betrayal and trickery are common among them. To be a relatively successful pirate able to live to the end. Father Utrovsky wouldn't be a person who's easily fooled, even if he's not a bright person. Emmeline White wore a look of disbelief as he wished to retort. Klein rubbed the top of his cane and leisurely added, Father has a powerful sealed artifact in his possession. It is known as the Mental Terror Candle. It can allow the wielder to enter the deepest recesses of the target's soul. There, no one can lie. Moreover, this is only one of its uses. I don't know if it has any other abilities. Emmeline gradually froze, his eyes losing focus. After a dozen seconds, he whispered with a pale expression. When I said I was willing to change my faith, that old man came in with a lantern. There was a candle in the lantern, and I didn't get a good look at it. Klein tilted his head and gave Emmeline White a sympathetic glance. 
Perhaps Father Utrovsky used it to plant a seed in you, one that gradually and thoroughly makes you wholeheartedly believe in Mother Earth. The corner of Emmeline's mouth twitched, revealing a smile comparable to a zombie's. I don't feel anything at all. It shouldn't be anything like you said. Besides, aren't my parents coming? They can blame the priest through ordinary people, saying that he forcefully detained me, forcing him to make a choice between selling the Church of Mother Earth's reputation and letting me go. Isn't that a great idea? Klein maintained his look of pity, clasped his hands, and raised them to his nose, acting truly penitent. If I were Father Utrovsky, I would choose to call the police and have them determine the truth. Tell me, who do you think will suffer in the end? The bishop who has the right to preach, or a vampire? Sanguine! Sanguine! Emmeline White's facial muscles seemed to twitch. He clenched his fist and punched the back of the pew in front of him. I can wait. Once I memorize the Holy Bible, I will ask the old man to let me return. He is a truly devout person and will not break his promise. Klein didn't turn his head and said with a smile, I've been to 48 River Bay Avenue. Your parents have already moved away. Naturally, not only will they move away, they will also move to somewhere I'm not aware of. Emmeline White responded without hesitation. Klein added with a relatively relaxed tone, They moved in a hurry. They left a lot of things behind, such as the things in your room. Emmeline White's expression suddenly became extremely wonderful. He gaped his mouth, abruptly stood up, squeezed past Klein, and rushed towards Bishop Utrosky who stood in front of the sacred emblem of life. Father, Bishop, I want to return home. I want to return home. I want to return home, Emmeline shouted. Seeing that there were still believers who hadn't finished their Holy Communion yet, Father Utrovsky didn't respond. He merely gave the pitiful vampire a calm look. Emmeline quickly shut his mouth and became quiet. He paced back and forth, looking extremely anxious. Smiling, Klein stood up, took his cane and hat, and strolled down the aisle to the front pew of the cathedral's hall. When Holy Communion was over, he walked up to Father Utrovsky and said with a serious expression, Bishop, I don't know why you're retaining Emmeline here, nor do I want to know. I only know one thing. His parents have entrusted me to take him back. If this giant-like priest agrees to my request so easily, I can only light a visual candle for this vampire, Emelyn. No, I'm sure he will hate candles from this day forth. It's best to mourn for him, Klein secretly thought. Father Utrovsky looked down at them and replied gently, Emelyn can return home at any time. Klein gave Emelyn White a glance raised his right hand, and tapped his chest. He wanted to gesture the sign of the crimson moon by tapping in a clockwise fashion, but in the end, he forced himself to draw the triangular sacred emblem. Emelin became rather anxious from the look Klein gave him. Without a word, he rushed to the door of the cathedral and left without a hitch. Klein followed him at a moderate pace without any signs of anxiety. After proceeding forward in what appeared like a jog, Emelin suddenly slowed down and said in a daze, I feel like I'm starting to miss the Harvest Church, the feeling of memorizing the Holy Bible, and the sacred emblem of life. I wish to return to clean and tidy the place. It will only take an hour, an hour. This planted seed is even more vicious than I had imagined. No matter where this vampire goes, he will return to the Harvest Church every day and work for an hour? That's actually quite all right. At the very least, the seed which was planted didn't change Emmeline's faith. In a way, he's showing him some respect. But why did I use the word respect? That candle is called Mental Terror Candle, and it's said to be from a dragon. The spectator pathway is rather scary. Klein tapped his cane and said, Do you need me to remind you of anything? There's no need. Emmeline's expression distorted as he angrily said, I will fight this feeling. I'm going to move to Mitzi Shower or Faisak. I don't believe that I'd still wish to return when I've left Bakalin. He gritted his teeth and suddenly exhaled. <sighs> Let's take the carriage back to River Bay Avenue. All right, Klein responded nonchalantly. After a few steps, Emmeline stopped the rental carriage. Just as he was about to board the carriage, his back stiffened for two seconds. Then, he said so quietly that Klein could barely hear him. I 
don't have any money on me. I do, Klein smiled. Emelyn stopped talking and got onto the carriage. Klein sat across him, and as the carriage began to move off, he asked, as if in thought, Your father is a doctor? One that possesses outstanding skills in drugs and medicine. Although he was listless, Emelyn raised his chin out of habit. This is the gift that we sanguine enjoy. The most outstanding potion masters are all from the sanguine. Is that so? Klein whispered to himself, his thoughts a mystery. Emmeline said after a moment of silence, Write to your friend and tell him that I've returned to River Bay Avenue. My parents will come looking for me. All right, Klein answered simply. After nearly 20 minutes, the carriage pulled into River Bay Avenue and stopped in front of Unit 48. After paying the fare, Klein got out of the carriage and saw Emmeline White look towards the bedroom, his expression becoming abnormally excited. Restraining himself, the vampire pressed his hand to his chest and bowed deeply at Klein. In any case, I must thank you. Klein immediately revealed a smile. There's no need to thank me. The bounty reward of finding you and the transportation fees will be obtained from your parents. Also, you have to concoct a medicine with Beyonder effects to help me treat a patient. This is the reward that your family should pay.